nice to be back to GNUCR. Uh, thanks for inviting me again. Uh, thanks to Greg and Ms. Khan and many of you who are attending uh, this afternoon's lecture on Young Kim. I did uh, translate uh, his biography, uh, originally published here in Korea in 2005, and I translated it into English language, The Unsung Hero, the common Young Kim story. Uh, it was published in 2011. And I'm also a director of Young Kim Center for Korean American Studies at UC Riverside. I named a research center after Colonel Young Kim. Why did I do that? Uh, it's because I think uh, there are many uh, legacies or values that particularly younger generation uh, should learn about Young Kim. And he was not only a uh, war hero, uh, he's the only person that I know received equivalent of a Medal of Honor, the highest military honor from Italy, France, and Republic of Korea. And, but he did not get Medal of Honor from his own country, the United States of America. So I will let you know why that happened, right? So this is his uh, picture uh, right before he passed away in 2005. Did you know uh, young Ho Kim was selected as one of the 16 the most famous war heroes in American history. Period. Uh, it's not that I'm, the, I'm not the one who selected him. He said it was MSN.com on 2011, two years ago, on Memorial Day. They came up with 16 names. Do you know who that is? George Washington. No, correct. And what about right next to him? It's a Patton, General Patton. What about him? Eisenhower. And that's a MacArthur. And Young Kim is one of them. And this is the list, including George Washington, Green, Grant, Lee, Custer, Patton, Eisenhower, MacArthur, Young Kim. So this is, um, you know, household names. Every, everybody knows about uh, George Washington. Everybody knows about MacArthur. I think General MacArthur is more famous here in Korea than Young Kim, right? That's a shame, I think, in my opinion. And not only he was a war hero, uh, he re retired in 1972. And between 1972 and 2005, that he passed away, uh, he did a lot of community works, public services. So you know, these are all the, you know, these are just few. Both military decorations as well as the civilian decorations. Just too few to name all these. So who is Young Ho Kim? And the author who wrote Korean book decided to find someone who could represent both Korean American community and Korea. Why? Because in the aftermath of LA riots of 1992, the Korean community, Korean American community suffered a great deal. And yet nobody really cared. So he wanted to find a role model that could bridge the gap between US and Korea uh, did he or she substantially contribute to American society? Did he contribute to Korea? Can his or her story help improve relations between U.S. and Korea? And can his or her story help improve relations between Korea and Japan? And he was looking for somebody, someone 
who could fulfill all these four questions. And he began to cross out names. Sung Man Ri, An Chang Ho. And the only person who met all these four criteria in the end was Yong Kim. So I have wanted to talk about Yong Kim. And these are some of the uh, replies or that they wrote about Yong Kim after reading his book in Korean. And Dr. Samuel Lee, who was a lifelong friend, they grew up together in Los Angeles. And later on, he became very well known on his own. He was a two-time Olympic champion in diving, representing the United States in 1948 and 1952. And he read this book. He said, I did not know about him. He was a lifelong friend. They grew up together. And he said, parts made me shed tears. So that was a you know, true compliment, I think. And did you know that Yong Kim is included in Korean textbook, fifth grade Korean textbook? Who is included? Yu Guan Sun, Yun Bong Gil, Kwang Ge To De Wang, and Kim Yong Ho. Those are the four names, four individuals included in fifth grade Korean textbook. So for 10 years from now, all these young kids will know about Yong Ho Kim for sure. They're all learning right now. And in 2010, uh, this is an inaugural uh, ceremony of Young Kim Center for Korean American Studies at UC Riverside. And this is the first time, the only uh, time, only uh, research center named after Korean American person, period, at the university in the United States today. So I'm very proud to serve as the founding director of Young Kim Center for Korean American Studies. And LA Unified School District, in 2009, they opened a new uh, junior mid middle school, and they named the school Young Kim Academy. And this is not private school. This is public school, part of U Los Angeles Unified School District. How many of you visited Los Angeles? Anybody? You visited LA? Uh, did you have a chance to visit Little Tokyo? Did you go to that place? That's part of Little Tokyo. And uh, right next to Japanese American National Museum, there is a monument called Go for Broke Monument. And this is equivalent of Japanese American Veterans Association. Those Japanese Americans who served during World War II, fighting for the United States against Italians and the Nazis. And they listed all the names of those Japanese Americans who served during World War II. Right next to it, there is a small structure. It reads like this. Go for Broke Educational Foundation acknowledges Colonel Young Kim as a chairman. This is Japanese American Veterans Association. And yet the leader of Japanese American Association, Veterans Association, is not Japanese American, but Korean American. What an ironic twist. Isn't that really interesting? And how and why the Japanese American soldiers would consider Yong Kim as their leader? 
Let's go to France. Bifontaine, France. This is a small village, border between France and Germany. And during World War II, more than 20,000 Allied forces fought to capture this small no man's land town. In a small town, but it was a very strategic location where the both Allied forces and the German forces tried to capture, recapture, just like a demilitarized zone in Korea during Korean conflict that, you know, did back and forth. More than 20,000 troops fought here, and yet now there's a small copper plate entrance of the local church reads like this. Anybody read French? Can you translate? It says, to the left of the church door was wounded one of the heroes of the 100th Battalion, Captain Young Kim, on 23rd October 1944. He was captured, but he succeeded in escaping with uh, something called Shi. Exactly. Thank you so much. Uh, Thomas people still remember Captain Young Wong Kim, who was captured, but never surrendered, and escaped successfully. And why would Thomas people remember, still remember Captain Young Wong Kim instead of General So and So? You know, oh, was somebody higher up? He was only captain. Captain is very low rank officer. And like I said, more than 20,000 people fought in this town. And during World War II, Young Wong Kim decided to enlist in the U.S. Army. In the beginning, in 1941, the United States practiced overt racism and did not allow Asian Americans to enlist. Asians were considered as second-class citizens. So Young Wong Kim volunteered, but they rejected him. You don't qualify. You cannot enlist. Later on, uh, they changed the policy, allowing blacks and Asians to enlist. So he had to fight against Germans and uh, Nazis, as well as Mussolini's, or Italians, their enemies. He also had to fight against racism and discrimination in the United States, his own country. And he also had to fight against the prejudice by Japanese Americans who did not appreciate their uh, leader as Korean American. Remember, Korea was a colony of Japan in the 1940s. So he had to overcome all these obstacles, major obstacles. And this is the you know, very typical sign you could uh, see in the particularly southern states, deep south, segregation between blacks and whites until the 1960s. It was only civil rights movement that allowed minorities to truly become equal citizens of the United States after 1965, right? And when Pearl Harbor December 7, 1941, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. The Japanese Americans, just like me, the Korean American, Japanese Americans in the United States were considered as enemy aliens whose loyalty was in question. In other words, these Japanese Americans, are they loyal to Emperor of Japan or will follow the Constitution of the United States of America. We couldn't trust them. So, in the end, U.S. government decided to round up entire Japanese American population in the western states, including Washington, Oregon, California, and parts of Arizona. So if you're a Japanese American living in those four states, you were forced to relocate to so-called Japanese-American internment camps. 
or they call it as concentration camp. And this is the instruction telling all Japanese Americans to report. You have 72 hours to report to the assembly center, and therefore, you know, it, it was considered as a very, very risky. To alleviate this so-called loyalty question, young Japanese Americans decided to enlist, proving that they are loyal American citizen. So that's the reason why during World War II, 100th Battalion, 442nd Regimental Combat Unit was formed, entirely consisted of Japanese American soldiers, and the officers were, many of them were white, one Korean American, Young Woo Kim. Young Woo Kim was assigned to this unit. We don't know why. It was a mistake. So when Young Woo Kim was assigned to this 100th Battalion, the commander of the 100th Battalion told Young Woo Kim, this is a mistake, I will transfer you out right now. That's when Young Woo Kim said, Sir, you're mistaken. I'm American, Japanese American is American, we'll fight as American, and I will stay. So that's how the story began to unfold. Like I said, draft legislation was passed by one vote allowing Asian Americans to enlist in the U.S. military. And that's how Young Kim was drafted on January 30th, 1941. And uh, it became legendary war hero. Japanese Americans, Japanese American soldiers, in the beginning didn't appreciate, didn't like a bit. So they, uh, told, they called Young Kim Yabo, Yabo, looking down. In Korean, Yabo. Yeah. By the time the training ended, the Japanese American soldiers began to call Young Kim Samurai Kim. They say it is highest respect to their leader. So that's how their attitude changed. To, from Yobo to Samurai Kim. And Yobo Kim from the beginning was a brilliant soldier. Uh, he had special talent that no one had. One of the features was that his map reading ability skill was just ex brilliant, exceptional that he, if he uh, looks at the map, he had a special talent to memorize entire map in his brain in 3D. So he had a photographic memory, a special map reading skills. So he could take his man to locations where he's supposed to. But if you take your man to the wrong direction, you could face entrapment or get wiped out. So you know, right now, nowadays, you have a GPS, so you know that could help. But back then, no GPS, and you're know, mainly fighting in the mountains, uh, rural side. So take going to places where you're supposed to is critical. It's a life or death matter. And did you know that Young Woo Kim single-handedly helped to liberate Rome? Allied forces, they landed in a place called Angio, right next to Rome. It's like uh, Incheon landed. To Seoul. 
However, Allied forces couldn't attack Rome because at the time, the German tanks were much superior uh, than Allied forces. And depends on location of German tank units, the Allied forces were afraid that if you launch a major attack, they may get wiped out. So they were, they landed here, that, but they couldn't attack for several months. And the commander of the Allied forces you know, were very mad and told his men, attack! That's when Young Kim decided on his own cross border into German territory and captured two German prisoners of war and brought them back. And that, that itself is very dramatic. It's known as a no man's land. Uh, both Allied forces and the German forces, if anything moves, they will shoot. They are ready to shoot. Anything moves, they are ready to shoot. And yet, he was somehow able to cross into German territory and capture two German prisoners of war and brought them back. And based on interrogation, they provided the Allied forces attack and recaptured Rome. It's just, it's just like a movie. It's like a drama, but it's real. And because of that, he was awarded with a highest military medal of uh, Italian government. Yeah. You guys know about Leaning Tower, Pisa, right? It's one of the uh, wonders of a human civilization, right? Anybody uh, visited uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa? Anybody visited, you visited did you go up there? No, right? I went up there in 1975. At the time, you were allowed to go up, but now it's too dangerous. So you, know, you don't know when it's going to collapse. You know, it was Young Kim who saved this Leaning Tower. He was the operation officer in charge of retaking town of Pisa. But he knew the town of Pisa had many, many human treasures, including Flynn Tower. And he wanted to save them. Instead of bombing the, bomb the hell out of the town, he wanted to save it all. So he devised a attack plan. So on a river crossing, there's a river, and you have to cross the river into town of Pisa. And he wanted to capture the town without bloodshed. And Just like this, this is town of Pisa, German forces were all waiting for Allied forces. And he carried out fake attack. First day in the morning, he pretended the unit Allied forces were crossing the Arno River. That's when German forces began to shoot. But it was a fake attack, so they retreated. Next day, same time. They tried to cross a river again, but still it was a fake attack. They shoot, began to shoot again, but much less than the day before. And Thursday, they began to cross really this time, really this time. But when they were beginning to cross Arno River, all of a sudden, they did not face any encounter by Germans. Why? Because they ran out of ammunition. They Retreated. So they, he was able to recapture the town of Pisa without bloodshed. It's brilliant strategy. Just like that, you know, he, he was an exceptional man when it came to uh, military strategy. Uh, you see the same brilliance when he comes back to Korea, his mother country. 
And after successful campaign in Italian front, the 100th Battalion and 442nd Regimental Combat Unit were sent to France, including Bifontaine. And so they began, began to fight in the front line. Bruyers and Bifontaine, he was severely wounded and by escaped, right? And after, you know, this, uh, finally, he was honorably discharged, became a civilian. And when he returned in 1945, LA Times had this picture with his mother, and he was returned. And this is, was highly unusual. At the time, a minority person, particularly Asian American face, to be included in LA Times was very, very special. Very unusual. Nineteen forty six he retired. You know, he became a very successful businessman. What kind of a business? He uh, we we cannot confirm this, but we think he was the first coin laundry operator in Los Angeles. Coin laundry, not hand laundry, but coin laundry. And coin laundry business, and because of that, he became very successful. And he earned more than four to five times of his captain's salary. That's when, so between 1946 and 1950, he became a very successful businessman. 